Hi, welcome back to Wallflowers. So today is the day I deep clean. I've actually been toying this over and thinking about how I live, um, how much I'm accruing in the home and how I'm not keeping it organised or to my personal standards clean enough. Now I do housework every day. I sweep, I mop the floors, I wash the dishes, I clean the surfaces, I make my bed, I clean the toilet, um, I dust round. I do clean chores absolutely every day. Um, it's still not enough for me personally. Now I don't have time to deep clean as often as I should is what I tell myself. Um, I don't know if other people do this, but I, on downtime, I'll, I'll watch different videos, some of my favorites, some, you know, like-minded, um, cooking, prepping, uh, frugal living, um, all the style I like, as well as alternative history and the other interests I have in life, gardening, etc. But I also watch a lot of cleaning and organising videos. And whilst I'm watching those videos, I will be sat on the settee having a coffee thinking, that's a good idea, that's a good idea, that's a good idea. Whilst I'm not actually doing anything about it, sometimes I might get up and do a draw tidy, just one draw. And then for weeks and weeks on end, I'll do no extra. I won't organise another drawer. I won't organise different spaces within the home. And I let that slide. And that's something I've become more and more aware of. Um, and I've probably done that for a few years. Um, in the meantime, things are piling up where they shouldn't be. Now I, I follow homesteaders, um, I've followed quite a few for a long, long time now and a lot of their homes, they're not hoarders, everything's clean and tidy, it's just everything seems to be out on display at all times, so no cupboards hiding things, um, things not put away, every surface has something on it all the cupboards uh, have no doors on and everything is displayed. And I, more than anyone, absolutely love looking at it. It looks like a treasure trove to me. And I'd love to actually be in that home and really sink in and take in what the goods are, what the objects are, and really appreciate it for what it is. Now, I love looking at it, but when it comes to my own personal space, I know I can't live like that for my own well-being. It demotivates me to live in that environment. And I know because I've tried. I haven't even tried. I've just let it organically happen. I've had all the jars around me all the time. I've had things that I've cooked and prepped and left them out. I've had things pile up, um, different utensils, different gadgets, different food products, different things and I've left them all around me um, not taking the time to do what I need to do for me and that is organise and deep clean. So I've been thinking about it, um, I don't really have expendable money to buy um, home organisers um, but I've spent a little on the app team who everyone's familiar with at the moment. Um, and I've done what I could allow within my budget. And I'll show you that pretty soon. But in the meantime, I've started to plan. Uh, I'm starting to visualise a plan in my mind. Now, if I can just pan round and show you this kitchen, <coughs> bearing in mind it's had its first superficial clean, so a lot has already been moved from the surfaces. If I'd have shown you this a week ago, 
it would be in a totally different kitchen um, but I hadn't actually had this video in mind and completely organised what I was going to do with it. So with Mr Wallflowers will just quickly just pan round. Don't hide all, all the stash areas. I've got bags down here which is full of clutter, empty oh. jars, <laughs> different things. Um, I've buffed the sink up as you saw yesterday so the sink is looking much better than it was but yet the daily dishes are there. Um, oops, Daisy, I struggle with space, so I have my scales at the back, my dehydrator. There's actually a piece of rotten fruit at the back that can be disposed of. Um, I, I do little things, and there's little things I have done. Um, but as I say, for me, there's a lot further for me to go. In one of the cupboards, I've placed a Lazy Susan. And I did that approximately about six months ago. So I've got that in place. Oh. I've got a step, a step um, in the cupboard. Um, so I've got that in place for storage. And I've been trying to address what I keep in what cupboard um, to store it. The cupboard and the cooker itself needs a good overhaul. Um, I'm gradually been getting, I've just got a step ladder here if Mr. Wallflowers can show you there, but I'm about to get up to the tiles shortly. Um, I've addressed this cupboard, so I put a cup rack in. I think that cost me £1.50, £2 possibly from Timu. I have done this for a long while now. I keep my porridge, I don't use the storage spout, but it's just a perfect container to keep my porridge in the tub. And I keep the cups, cups and glasses in there. In this cupboard it's still not completely organised but I have some different coffees, stash of tea bags, sugars, flowers, sugars and drinking stuff and my flask. So that's what's in that cupboard. And this cupboard you're going to gasp at how many treats I've got because once I actually put them all together but this is the treat cupboard. So in amongst it, we've got crackers, cakes, scones, a supply of biscuits, and these are all things I'm able to get from the food initiative. So a lot more of that stuff's gonna go up to the boys, but that's what we have. And then in this corner, I've addressed it somewhat, but there's still a lot of work to be done. I have the shelving rack on wheels. And I'm keeping quite a lot of the different jars on there at the moment, canning lids and different things. I'm just trying to use it as an organiser and it's out the way basically. So yeah, just a few different bits of everything. I've now changed how I keep the potatoes. So I keep them in dishes that I've got air holes in. I've just dumped some sweets on top for now. Um, some dishes with air holes in. And I've got the small potatoes in one and the other potatoes in another. I do the washing filter. So I fill these two jars, two bottles up. And then I normally try to get 10 litres. So I have the two five litre bottles to one side and they need to stay because it's an ongoing process. Sometimes I'll have the 10 litres in reserve and enough water for the day. Then we'll do a cooking or a cannon session and I'll use all that water up so it means I have to start again. I do keep some water in reserve. I buy bottled water as part of my food initiative shop. But I try to keep that to one side and provide ourselves with the daily water and what we need for food storage, etc. Um, you'll probably notice the fridge came. Um, so this is the fridge. Um, we're absolutely pleased with it. Um, the food is all still at Carol's. Um, and unfortunately, she's busy today, so I'm gonna either, either have to wait till this evening to get it or possibly tomorrow. Um, and then the fridge itself, oh, if I can get in. Um, not an awful lot in there as yet. Um, the jars and everything in the side as usual. Um, the things that we kept at home. Uh, I buy chocolate pretty cheaply from the food initiative, so I've got quite a few bars 
in reserve and I get them for just 50 pence a bar so I have the chocolate supply all our lemons etc um, if we just pan round the back now I'll move the ladder again we have a little wooden top needs cleaning we have our compost bin for tea bags vegetable peelings etc few bits that I'm pulling out at the moment so a couple of tins of paint and a few bits that I'm just in the process of finding a home for that's where we keep the pressure canner I keep my coffee grinder in there a honey pot and underneath there's a shelf for some other bits and most of these are canon releases and as you can see the drawer needs a good tidy and needs organising Last cupboard in the kitchen. Oh, I forgot to show you on top of the fridge. We keep all the jars and I have four boxes for organisers. So in there will be bubble wrap, <coughs> paper food cream. bags. What? For the ice cream. Bubble wrap for the ice cream. <laughs> um, some extra candle jars, etc. Whatever I can't find a home for, I'll get stored on top of the cupboards in a little box. And that's what I do on top of the fridge. So that needs a dressing. On top of this one, we have some extra bowls that we like to use. Don't worry about it, we will clean it up. But as I say, things like this happen, and this is how we keep it real on the Wallflowers channel. I'm not going to stop the video, I'm not going to delete it, but what I will do is Put your quickly, shoes on. <laughs> quickly grab a brush. <coughs> the floor is rotten. I'm not going to hide that from you right now either. Um, this is real living and this is why we have to do a deep clean. So I'm literally just going to brush that all to the one side. I'm sure we've all broken a, a jar from time to time. Lucky that was one of my smaller ones uh, and not one of my actual cannon jars. If I can just get behind you Mr Wallflowers. I'll come back to that last cupboard and then we shall begin with the actual cleaning. So that's all the pieces of glass to one side. But yeah, these things happen, especially when you're cleaning and organising. So I've put the cage in, um, the KitchenAid up above, so it's taken some space off the surface. Got a few extra jars and the uh, bowls. This one looks pretty organised, so I've got a three tier shelf with my jars and my extra bits on. I have my crockery and in here another Lazy Susan towards the back so I can use for all my spices. But I have overspill and I have different things that I'm working on. I've still got the mint, the mint I did a short while ago, the mint extract and that's sitting there in the cupboard in the dark. And um, that's what I have in that cupboard. And this one, it's turned somewhat into a junk drawer. But this was a little, a little team thing I ordered. So it's meant to be for a knicker drawer or a sock drawer. And I actually decided to implement it. One of those days I made an effort. I implemented it and I put my dishcloths in. And it just keeps so many of them together and it just fits really nicely into this drawer as I say a lot more work to go into that drawer but it's contained and I'm able to shut the door the drawer the drawer and it's not playing on me that I can't do anything it doesn't make me immovable sometimes if I see too much in my home all at once it, dem it demotivates me so much that I I'm overawed and I won't get up and do what needs doing. I'll actually run away and hide from it. And that's something I've had to accept within myself. It's not a weakness. It's just something that happens. I just walk away from it and I don't want to deal with it. And if it's that bad, I can leave it for a couple of days and I've literally got to work on myself and think, well, if I don't go and face that and tackle it, no one else will, so it's not going to go away. But it does demotivate me, so I have to put things away. I know that works for me. So I'll just show you the last cupboard. 
and under here we just have pots and pans so we have quite a few different pans and again it's not organized our bag of moringa different things of sugar and it's things i'm going to work through gradually so the whole kitchen needs reorganizing um, basically the whole house and um, I think being frugal is yes about expenditure but it's actually about making what you have last be appropriate and be fulfilling for as long as you possibly can without having to replace it buy new fix it repair it mend it spend any extra cash on it or indeed let it affect you and take that energy away from you so part of extending my frugality at the moment is a deep clean and looking after what i have so let me begin up on the tiles because i've been canning quite a bit i hope you can see it <laughs> it's not really what i want to show you but it's the truth the steam has caused a dirty drip down the tiles and it's not pleasant to look at and it's settling in the grout and with it being white tiles it shines out and shines out more than anything else at the moment so i've got the ceiling and i've got the tiles and indeed as you just saw with the broken jaw i've got a white floor so over the next couple of days, I'm going to work on cleaning the tiles. Once I've got it to a standard where I think it's basically clean, I'm then going to use the buffer that I used on the sink, buff the tiles up to the best quality I can. And I'm asking Mr. Wallflowers to look for a grout protector. Apparently you're supposed to do it once every 12 months. I've lived here 12, uh, nearly 20 years and I've never ever used a grout protector. And although they're really grubby now, I think I've done quite well with the lack of times that I've actually cleaned the tiles because it's not something I do every month. It's not something I do every six months. I'm just trying to be brutally honest with myself and with you. So today, it'll probably feel like the tiles are having a birthday by me cleaning them. <laughs> so, let's get the step ladder set up. I bought a, I think Mr. Wallflowers has put it out the way. I bought a five litre of white vinegar. I'm normally buying white vinegar in plastic bottles of 400 mils. Is it just to the side? It's in the cupboard. I normally buy a bottle of white vinegar um, and it's just the same size as a malt vinegar bottle and it normally costs me, well it used to cost me about 45 to 48 pence. It's starting to cost 75 pence and more just for this bot size bottle. So I took to ordering um, a five litre bottle from Amazon and i got a lot more for my money it broke down a lot cheaper i can't remember the exact price at the moment so that's how i'm buying my white vinegar now to make sure i've got enough in stock and i've just taken an old bottle for now that i like the shape of and i'm just filling that for my small portion so this is white vinegar it may be in a salad dressing bottle but it's white vinegar and i know what it is just thought i'd share that with you i wonder why my salad tasted funny the other day <laughs> you have to say that loud, Mr. Wallflowers. <laughs> I wondered why my salad tasted loud. It tasted like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm literally just going to apply some white bit of the cobweb as well, some white vinegar, and take the initial bit of grime off the surface. You see how much is coming off just with the white vinegar alone. See it coming off. White vinegar is ch much cheaper than any product you could cleaning product you could buy. And I'd say if you buy it in bulk now, it's even cheaper than the small portions in the shops.
But what I'm going to do next, I'm going to leave this to, to run into the grousing. And what I'm going to do next. is in my sink bowl just watch that broken glass at the side I'm actually going to pour two tablespoons two tablespoons of bicarbonate of soda Again, that's something I'm looking to buy in bulk next. Um, I'm going to add some water. Mix in the bicarb. And then add some... We call it washing up liquid, some people call it dish soap. Add a little bit of washing up liquid. Put that and mix again. This is a gadget again I bought off Timu. Um, I think again I paid £1.50 to £2 for. So it's somewhat stiffer than a toothbrush. It's got a graduated level where it comes to a point so it'll fit into the grouting better or into a door trim or window trim etc. And it's also got a corner for awkward angles to get her. And inside is, <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever find a use for it, but a plastic pair of tweezers to pick out any debris should you be cleaning um, the gap in a, in a window runner or etc. So I'm going to give this brush a whirl today. So I've got the bicarb, the washing off liquid and the water in there. I've already applied the vinegar. I'm going back up the ladder. As you can see this in real time, I say we've not edited it, we're not anything. Um, I'm just literally trying to clean my home and achieve things that I'm promising myself rather than sitting there and saying it and saying it and saying it and not actually getting around to doing it. I'm actually looking after our home and investing where where we've actually spent the money initially and making sure it's still something we're going to be happy with. So I don't want to squeeze too much of this off because I want it to be applied into the grousing. With it being a wall, it's more awkward to apply a liquid to, so you have to do it slowly and gently. It's all right, while it's on the floor, you can just tip it on. It'll be easier for me to do the floor than it will the walls. No, I haven't got my glasses on. Would be good. Good idea to put my glasses on at this point. <laughs> Now I have to be careful that I'm not actually just rubbing away the grouse on there. I'm actually just cleaning up what's there because these brown bits that you can see are actually an erosion 
of the grout and the stonework that's underneath it. So that's not necessarily dirt, although it looks like it. So I have to be careful about eroding the actual grout. So I'm actually going to have to replace some of the grout. I know you can get pens and you can get different things that you can whiten the grout with. But there has to be grout there in the first place for you to do it with. So you can scratch the top layer off. One day, yeah. <laughs> yep. When you can see the other areas of the grouse are actually coming up white. Sparkling. I'm hoping you can see that. There will be areas, as I say, where the grouse has chipped away, and no matter how much scrubbing or product I use, it's the grub that's missing. So I'm going to go ahead, clean as much of this as possible, and then we'll change over to the buffer. I'm a bit out of breath and I can't really talk and do this at the same time. So I'll come back when I've cleaned as much as this patch as possible. Okay, so at this stage, we've wiped with vinegar. We've used some bicarb and washing up liquid, and we've basically given it a really good wash. I've tried some of the areas with the brush and we're aware there's actually some damage in the grousing to this top area so <laughs> after I'd finished we allowed it to the wetness to dry and um, we sat down and had a cup of coffee now to keep it real we actually had a visitor and our visitor was here for about an hour and a half and eventually <laughs> we've managed to come back to continue the video because obviously we wanted to spend time with our, vi our visitor. So sometimes life takes over, sometimes you're in the middle of something, you do get a visitor, something crops up and you just have to stop and it's just real life. So I'm back to it and now I've got the buffer ready. I've got car wax. Now car wax can be used many different ways within the home. You saw me, I actually used it on the drainer and the sink last night. I'm actually going to use it on the tiles. You can use it on the side panels of your bath, on the inside panels of your bath. Probably not advisable on the bottom um, because if it's buffed too high, then obviously you're and using wax you would increase any slip and race so just around the inside of the bath um, on your taps on your porcelain sinks on any tiles you know this wax is not just for cars you can use it in a myriad of ways so I'm going to take it and I'm just going to put a simple square so you just sort of light squares I'm going to pop my glasses on I'm on number four. What do you reckon, Mr. Wolf? Mm. I'll stay on number four mm. and switch on. Now, basically, you can see the imprint of the wax quite waxy 
and we're just basically spreading that around and allowing that to permeate the top of the tile. I'm trying to also keep my balance on this ladder. as I gain experience in using this tool and gain experience in cleaning up the tiles as best I can things can only improve so this is the first time I'm actually doing it to this level other times I've literally just given them a quick wipe As you can see, I haven't gone overboard. I've just done a quick minute or so. I'm now going to take the kitchen roll, wipe off some of the surplus wax. And um, have we got the, the nice fluffy head for next, Mr. Wallflowers? they're still dead coming off even though we've cleaned the two different products For the purpose of the video I'm just concentrating on this main piece but I will be doing all the tiles in the kitchen. And there's not that many on either side. Is there? Yeah it's basically just splash back around the side and it's mostly on this side of the kitchen isn't it? Mm -hmm. So for me to get my balance whilst I change the heads. I'm quite out of breath because the temperatures are really high here today. Um, we're not used to these temperatures, are we? It's great. <laughs> what temperatures would you say we're having here today? It's 78. So we're having 78 degrees. Now for us in Lancashire in the UK, this is a really, really hot day for us. It's supposed to be 90 on Thursday. Some we've seen since June. Yeah. We've had nice days, but this is the first proper sunshine, sunshine we've had it in. Okay, so I'm back up safely. I'm still on a number four and I've got the fluffy head on. I'm going to go in for Thank mm -hmm. you. 
I'm hoping this shows up on camera because it's a remarkable difference here in reality. Mm, see the green. Like a mirror. <laughs> and there we have it. I'm quite happy with that. So I shall carry on around the kitchen. Um, the kitchen is my primary focus. As I say, I've got a few little storage containers due. Um, they should come in the next day or two. And my motivation is at a high level. <clears throat> um, I hope you enjoy these types of videos. Let me know um, because I have to concentrate on this for a short while. I still will do all my normal stuff, but I have to concentrate on this for a short while for myself, for Mr. Wallflowers and for us too get our house in order before Christmas, before Winter. any of these <laughs> things get worse that we're due to expect um, and I just want to concentrate on this for a, a while and get everything in order. Okay, let me know what you think anyway and let me know if you have any tips or hints on what you're actually doing or if you actually like it the way I was explaining I say I like to see everyone's house like that I just can't live in it myself <laughs> we all have different ways don't we I've got a myriad of collections but I just can't have them all on show I'm not getting rid of much um, only if something's broken or I definitely don't have a use for it but I won't be throwing things away for the sake of throwing it away I'm never going to be a minimalist but I just want to be as organized as I can be Okay, thanks for coming and I'll speak to you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.